Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of Throw. In this video, I'm going to be going over Dungeon Architect mixed with K-Kit's graphics. So for this tutorial, I'll be using these graphics by K-Kit, Dungeon Remastered, Low Poly, really nice looking graphics. Um, they are free and there are different additions to it, such as the extra, which include more assets like this. And then you can also pay for the source to get the blend files. And this is Dungeon Architect, which is on sale right now. Um, for 90 bucks, I think it's very much worth it, but that's because I'm going to make use of it. And there's a website called DungeonArchitect.dev. I'll put that in the description below. And it has very good documentation on how to set up pretty much everything. You can create dungeons like for top downs, randomized dungeons. Um, you can set up where the rooms lock until all enemies are defeated. Certain rooms have treasure chests and keys, then your goal is to get to a boss room. And yeah, you can pretty much generate a lot of things with this as long as you learn it. And this, the learning curve isn't so steep because the documentation is really well done. So let's get started. I was playing around with it for a little bit. Um, this is not something I'm going to be going with, but I'm just going to go over to my content, right click, and then in Dungeon Architect, I'm going to create a dungeon theme and I'll just call this example one. And I'll double click into it and it will open up this, this preview. And I am using 5.4 and I know Unreal Engine's 5.4 is a little, um, it does crash quite a bit and I'm just going to be specifically using KKit um, dungeon assets because they look super nice. And over here on the bottom right is the preview. And then you can set up the details on the upper right. So what you're going to want to do is depending on what you play this with. So I usually use this for Cinti assets. Anything modular uh, works really well with this. Cinti and KKit, anything kind of low poly or yeah, anything modular. I've seen a lot of realistic designs with this. People have used this for Nanite um, mega scans as well. And I know he has examples. If you go over to the Dungeon Architect Launchpad, there are quite a few examples that you can download and see how it's made. And you can also just start off with his with his design and change it into your own assets. So that's super nice. So I'll just adjust this window and you'll pretty much see some stuff already set up. These are pretty empty. And if you highlight over it, it'll show you like where it's going to go, for example, and you can randomize it. So don't worry about where it is specifically. So for example, if I just drag over my ground tile floor and just drag it, you'll see the floor is already kind of made up. You'll see some holes and stuff. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, that just means there's probably like your character might slip through or something else is going to go around it. And for the probability, you just want to equate it all to one. And for example, basically, if there is something that's one, then that will take place in the empty spots. But if nothing is equal to one, for example, if I do 0.5, it's going to have a bunch of holes in the ground. So if I go ahead and add this, I'll change this one to something like 0.2. And then I'll change this one to one, just because I want there to be a floor everywhere for this example. And it's already kind of looking pretty cool. 0 0.2 might be a little high for this. Yeah, 0 0.1 looks a lot better. And you'll see that it'll mix and match these two types of ground. And you can, of course, add as many as you want. And now for the walls. For the walls, I want to add multiple types. So something kind of flat. So I'll add this type of wall. But if I just do this, then it's going to only be this type of wall. And I want there to be a bit of variety. So I'll scooch this up. And I'll just drag and drop into this and then I want to add this kind and then I want to add this one and I'll have this one be my main kind of design. So this one will definitely have a probability of one and I'll just add this one just cause. So now you can either tag, just drag and drop all of them like this, or if they're all going to have the same probability in same dimensions and so on, then you can just multi-click on as many walls as you want and just drag it and it'll come out as a little grid here. But for my case, I'm not going to be doing that because I'm going to set the probability separately. So for this, I'll do something like 0 0.05. This one will also be 0 0.05. So 5% chance. I'll do 5% chance for this one. I'll do another 5% for this one. This one, I'll do something like a 10% chance. And then this one will also be a 0 0.05. And now you'll see it kind of look a lot more randomized. And what you're going to want to make sure is the walls are facing the correct way, for example. 
So if I had one of the walls facing outside, so for example, this plant one, actually it's double-sided, so that's fine. So I found a wall that will look the wrong way. So this one is facing on the outside and I actually want it to face on the inside. All you would have to do is just select this one and flip it. So I'll just flip it by 180 degrees. So now all my bookshelves are on the inside and that's exactly how I want it because these rooms are set up so that my character will be going through the door here. And yeah, the bookshelves on the outside would just look like the basic wall in this case. And next up I can add fence, wall separator, fence separator, and so on. So my fence comes with a separator, so I don't really need the fence separator. Um, but it would go in corners like this. So I could go ahead and just add that. So a good example that I'm going to be using is this stairway. So I'll go ahead and just add stairs and you're going to see it's not going to be aligned properly. I'm just going to select this and then rotate it so it looks correct. And if I align it for one, you'll see that it also aligns for the rest of them. So it aligned for this one, it aligned for this one and so on. It is clipping through the ground. Um, I could just, uh, in my case, this wouldn't really matter because I'm going for more of a one room at a time view. So I'll have a blueprint camera above each of each and every room. You see the center of it. And now for the doorway, because my modular pieces are separated, I can just add this doorway so that the wall will always look like this. And you're going to notice that I'm not going to really have anywhere to put this. So what I'm going to do, want to do is right click. So I can right click, drop down dungeon and add a marker node. And I'll call this something like a uh, doorway. So I'll right click, drop down the dungeon and add a marker node and I'll call this um, doors. And then I'm just gonna point this to that door that I'm looking for, just like this. And it's not gonna appear yet because I need to tell it that the wall will always have this door. So now for the marker emitter, I'm gonna add this one called doors and plug this in. And now you'll notice that all, every single wall of this type will have the asset in this menu or this marker emitter, which is doors. And this doors only has this one asset. So it's looking pretty good. And, and in order to get rid of the stairs, I just put the height variation probability, probability to zero. So now it's just a flat dungeon that your character can walk through. And you can play around with this as much as you want, but with the grid cell size, so I can do something like 400 and 400. And it's gonna be spaced out for me because my assets are not that big, but I could just select these and scale it up and same with the ground, but it might look a little odd in comparison to your character size. So I'll go ahead and undo that. And I'll just hit control save, go to my map, create a new map. I'll create a basic one and delete the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is just go over to the select. So I'll just go over to this drop down, go to dungeon architect, put in dungeon, and then reset the location so it's zero, zero, zero. And then I'll leave this builder class as grid add an object to the array and add the theme that I was working on. And then I can click build dungeon. And it may not look exactly how you saw it in the preview. And that's just because I'm gonna click on my dungeon actor. And then I'm gonna go down and adjust the settings to how I put it in the preview. So I'll do zero for the stairs, set the grid, grid size to 200 by 200 and by 100. And then I'm just gonna hit build again. And now you're gonna see that it is perfectly set. And that's pretty much the shout out I wanted to give for Dungeon Architect. Really great plugin. KKit also has amazing graphics. And yeah, thanks for watching Code of Zero. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.